The GoFlow product actually started with the sister company, Renewables First. Um, Renewables First designs and builds hydropower systems. And when the eel regulations came along and we had to meet the two millimeter intake screening requirement, um, we had a problem because there weren't really many products on the market. Um, and certainly the ones that were available were, were extremely expensive. Um, so really in desperation, we looked at just designing our own intake screening system, built effectively a few prototypes and installed them on smaller hydropower systems. And from the experience gained from that, we sort of kept redesigning it until we came up with a much larger, more rugged system, which is what you'd recognise as the GoFlow system now. We actually then separated GoFlow off as a separate business because it's essentially a product manufacturing business rather than a consultancy business like Renewables First with very, very different risk profiles. We do actually still share the office and the staff and the workshop and all the facilities really um, between the two companies, um, which works well for us because it means we can sort of put resources where we need to whichever company is busier at the time. Yeah, my career started at Rolls-Royce down in Bristol, um, making uh, military aero engines. Did a four-year apprenticeship down there. Um, when I finished that, I went to university, did a mechanical engineering degree. And once I finished that, I worked in the oil industry, uh, mainly in South America and Africa, um, drilling oil wells. Then I decided um, I didn't want to sort of spend my career doing that. I wanted to do something a bit more progressive. Um, so set up the original renew renewable energy business building um, or designing and building hydropower systems and then moved into wind power and solar PV and heat pumps. They have a, a mesh belt on them, which is like a continuous mesh belt. Um, and then they have um, level sensors each side of the screen. So when the controller detects the screen is starting to get blocked because there's a change in water levels across the screen, and um, the mesh belt um, it starts to move and it pulls the debris up the face of the screen up to the top sprocket and then it, it curves round and returns down the back edge. As it re returns around, all the debris falls off um, and anything that does stick to the mesh belt is blown off with the de debris flushing flow. All of that debris is carried away in a debris trough, um, backed and returned back to the river on the downstream side of the screen. Um, but it's, it's completely automatic and it just keeps the screen clean all of the time. This is great for hydropower systems because a hydropower system needs maximum flow rate and it needs minimum head loss. Um, so by keeping the screen clean, you can get the maximum flow rate through that screen. And you don't have any head losses across the screen, so you keep the maximum sort of inlet pressure. You've got the sort of power output optimised at, at all times. Um, it's been designed to absolutely minimise maintenance, so it should just keep running for as long as absolutely possible. We have um, you know, self-lubricating plain bearings in the system um, rather than you know, rolling element bearings that need an automatic greasing system because inevitably those greasing systems will fail and then the bearings fail and then you have a problem. There's a lot of um, linear rubbing strips on it that the mesh belt runs on, which is extremely tough. Um, everything's made in stainless steel, so you don't have any corrosion problems. The way everything is thought about, it's one of those products you, you just look at and people say, oh, that's clever and that looks nice. And, you know, and, and s simple and clever usually ends up being a good product, which is, is really what we're aiming for. Sort of certainly my background and a lot of our engineers' background is we work on real systems. So all those little annoying things we've seen over the years, we've sort of designed that out of the GoFlow system. Something we're always trying to push is the hydraulic drive system, which a lot of water companies seem reluctant to take because they're always worried about um, hydraulic fluid near water. Um, but ironically, if you have the electric drive system, it has a gearbox on it, which is full of gearbox oil, which is probably worse than the hydraulic system. Um, but the great advantage with hydraulic is it can be flooded and go underwater. And once the river level's gone down again, you just have to wash it down and check it and it just restarts again automatically. Um, so it'd be great to see people adopting the hydraulic system more often. Um, but also the control system, the water companies traditionally always use their own control systems and they're decades behind in terms of functionality. Um, I'd like to see in the future them adopting a more modern approach and using webcams and getting all that automation that comes with it. And just because it reduces the amount of maintenance again that you need to do and it just means you can solve most problems just sat from your desk looking at the webcam and just manipulating the screen with a remote access. Yeah, it would be nice to see them using our control systems. I'd recommend anybody has a GoFlow screen that's got a, a, a water intake system that they need to keep clean. It favours 
intakes that have got high volumes of flow going through them because um, if you have a high volume of flow you're going to accumulate a lot, a lot of debris and if you don't have some sort of automated system you'll be down there a lot physically clearing it. Obviously water company pumping stations are you know our biggest market um, but hydropower as well because they just take such a high volume of flow and they on a big proportion of the river flow through them um, so they need a very effective cleaning system. We are looking at new applications I mean we've looked at some in the food processing industry we've had some interesting inquiries we've had a few interesting inquiries from the sort of petrochemical industries we've done some projects for cooling tower water intakes I mean anywhere where there's a fluid flow um, you know where you need to get something out of the water some sort of debris um, it'd be very effective wastewater and sewage treatment works and things um, they'd certainly be very effective in that environment um, so yeah there's, lo there's lots of applications out there and we're keen to talk to anybody about any sort of applications or problems you've got and to see if we can solve your problem. Yeah, the main environmental sort of benefit of a GoFlow screen is the eels regulations and fisheries compliance. So wherever you've got um, um, juvenile eels that need screening down to two millimetres to stop them getting entrained in the system, they're, you know, they're obviously highly effective because they, they stop those eels going through the system and getting damaged. Um, but they're also in fisheries situations where you get, you get um, small fish fry and juvenile fish um, they quite often put six millimetre bar spacing screens in to prevent those getting sucked into turbines and things. Yeah, and in that situation, they're great because historically, again, you would have had very big screens with probably 40 millimetre bar spacing, which just meant that everything got sucked into the pumping station or turbine. So in some cases, they might come out the other end okay, but it's, it's clearly not a, a pleasant journey for a small creature to go through something like that, so it's, it's better that they don't. So yeah, there's a, a lot of environmental advantages of, of using the GoFlow system. The minimum sort of screening parameter for GoFlow screens is this screening down to two millimetres. It means those tiny glass eels can't get into the system. It's not just the bar spacing on the screen, it means that any gaps you've got around the screen or anywhere else in the mechanism also has to be down to that two millimetre gap. Um, so if you look at the whole GoFlow system, there's, there's nowhere anywhere where the gap is greater than two millimetres, um, whether it's in the mounting system, brush strips down the side, they just keep anything greater than two millimetres out of the system um, just to make sure they're completely compliant at all times. Yeah, we did um, four projects for Southern Water. Some very complicated designs were required. We did face a number of challenges with those projects as well. Um, two of them had to be installed by divers because they, they couldn't dewater the intakes because they had to be pumping water at the pumping stations all the time. So we had to make intake boxes that got installed by divers and then lift the screens um, into those boxes and then everything else was modular, all the walkways and things to just be bolted onto the outside. But yeah, the system worked well um, and it just sort of demonstrated how designing everything in 3D in advance and pre-assembling the workshop as well to check everything's perfect means you know the minimum amount of time out on site and the, the minimum amount of problems really so those projects went very well. The best bit, I think, of all these projects is when it's been just been installed because um, all the stainless steel is all very shiny and new and clean um, and it's, it's great just to see that you know beautifully finished pristine installation. Of course, once they turn it on, because it's a, a debris cleaning system, it gets covered in debris and filth. Um, so you only get that moment for a, a, a few minutes when it's finished, but um, it's still quite satisfying when it all does look that good. We, we have encountered um, in the early days of the company when people weren't that familiar with the system, um, particularly with um, the Environment Agency or the regulator for eel regulations, um, they had to be convinced that the system was, was effective and that went really well. I mean, they could, they could see their very well engineered systems and they could see the bar spacing meets the requirements and there's no other gaps. They were satisfied and can make sure we're on a list of products that are available. That works. We end up getting specified for projects because they, we've been suggested by the regulator. And in fact, we are doing a few projects now that are actually for environment agency pumping stations themselves, so they're obviously very happy with them. Well, it's probably motorsport. Um, I race a Formula Ford Z-Tech and a Monoposto Championship, a race series for 
um, older race cars and, and to be honest, older drivers as well. Um, but it's, it's quite competitive and it's good fun, sort of prepare the car myself and do all the race engineering and also drive it. Um, so it's quite a full on hobby. I've been fortunate enough to actually win the championship five times now. Unfortunately, not this year because I got involved in a bit of a bad accident which damaged the car quite badly. Um, but that's in the middle of its major rebuild now. So hopefully for next season, I'll come back at full strength and um, hopefully win the championship again. It's interesting working with a product that is, is both effective for the customer in terms of keeping their intake screens clean, but it, it's also doing some good for the environment as well by keeping you know, juvenile eels and juvenile fish from getting drawn into um, mechanical systems that would damage them. Um, so yeah, it's nice to be doing some good both for the environment and also for our customers.